Thank you PPA for sponsoring a portion of this video. In this video, we're gonna do a little comparison between the 85 millimeter versus the 135 millimeter. Now the 85 millimeter is an insanely popular prime lens, but over the year, I keep getting asked, is it ever worth moving on to the 135 or just starting it off right from the get-go? Well, we're currently at Disneyland right now, so let's go ahead and explore and find out. Now, really quickly, if you're an APS-C shooter, this is gonna be a 50 millimeter versus an 85 millimeter for you. Because if we take that one and a half times crop factor into consideration, it'll be very similar to the focal length that we're talking about in this video. So both lenses are gonna feel very similar. They give you that nice compression that brings the foreground and the background element closer to your subject. Kind of think of it as a three-dimensional sandwich if I flip it over this way it's all the ingredients coming closer together and we can end up with some really interesting shots because it's so honed in and it's so focused now I'm not gonna lie to you this is gonna be your first time with either of these lenses it's gonna feel really tight and you're gonna find yourself backing up a whole lot but don't get discouraged trust me the results that you'll be yielding from either of these lenses will be breathtaking if this is gonna be your first time with either of these lenses, then I would highly recommend the 85 millimeter first. It's a lot more affordable, especially for my APS-C shooters. The full frame 50 millimeters are gonna run you 150 to about $250. For my full frame users, you'll find some fantastic 85 millimeters in the five to $600 range. But if you want the 135 millimeter, you're looking at an upwards of a thousand plus dollars. With both of these being incredibly tight in framing, the 85 millimeter is obviously going to feel a lot more manageable. If you have a bit more breathing room where you can actually walk around in your area, you're likely gonna be able to achieve your shots. So then, why would you wanna consider the 135? Well, the 135 is gonna give you that extra distance, about 50 extra millimeter over an 85 millimeter. So when it comes to distance shots, the 135 is really going to shine, especially when shooting parades and performances. You'll be getting these nice highlight shots that hardly anyone else is getting. Also, there's just something about that closer framing look that makes the 135 look a tiny bit better compared to the 85. It also allows you to be more discreet if you're going for a more street style shot and allows you to capture more authentic moments. Not saying the 85 millimeter can't do that, but again, because of that extra distance, we have that slight advantage with the 135. So one of the reasons why these specific telephoto lenses are tied to some of the best portrait lenses is because it does a really good job at isolating the subject, putting all the attention on them by using a combination of background blur and limited framing. Especially at a place like Disneyland like this where there's so many people, we definitely need that limited framing. These lenses also put the least amount of distortion on human faces compared to wide angle lenses. For headshots especially, you want to consider 50 millimeter at least and beyond. Now do be careful though, some photographies are not a fan of that compression. You might get comments from your SO. She hates it, especially when I take photos of her with a telephoto lens. It makes my face look flat. If that's the case, back up a little bit further and take the photo then. <laughs> Boy, this compression isn't really helping with my double chin, is it? <laughs> Just want to take a quick break to thank the Professional Photographers of America for sponsoring a portion of this video. As a PPA member, you've heard me talk about their many educational resources and benefits for photographers running a business, such as the $15,000 worth of gear insurance included with the membership. You get access to their full replacement coverage with a flat $350 deductible and repairs with a flat $50 deductible. I know that would definitely come in handy for us in case any of our gear gets damaged during our travels. <laughs> Knock on wood, that doesn't happen. And that's that's not what I'm knocking. Especially since we'll be traveling to Maryland in January 2022 to attend Imaging USA. As a new member of PPA, when you sign up, you also get a free registration to your first year at Imaging USA. With gathering restrictions lifting, we can begin attending shows and hang out with fellow photographers, especially at the world's largest and oldest photography conference, Imaging USA. So hopefully, I'll see you there. Click on the link down below to not only get $25 off your PPA membership, but also your first year at Imaging USA for free. Free. Thanks for listening. Now back to the video. 
So let's talk bokeh really quickly. Another reason why these telephoto lenses are so popular is because of the blur. Combined with the compression that we talked about earlier, it brings in that extra magical element that's hard to explain why, but it just makes the photo look better. Just look at some of these foreground and background elements in these shots here. Ooh, so creamy. Now, both lenses are excellent at capturing details. You'll notice telephoto ranges tend to yield crisper and sharper results. And the fact that these are prime lenses makes the quality of your image that much better. Which leads us to a common question that I get asked often. Why not use a zoom lens? And to that I say, you absolutely can. Prime lenses just offer several advantages. Oftentimes they have a wider aperture, which allows in more light, gives more blur to the background, and it's lighter, smaller, and forces you to move around a bit more to get a better framed shot. But if zoom lenses tend to work better for you, by all means, go for zoom lenses. This video is all about figuring out what's best for you, and sometimes that could mean that none of these lenses are for you. Now, I'm gonna point out the obvious Dumbo in the room. My 135 Prime is an f2.8. Doesn't bring in that one extra advantage that I was talking about, but it has other advantages I value more, which is that it is the lightest and shortest 135 for the Sony E-mount. There are 1.8 versions of the 135. However, they are slightly bigger and heavier, but still overall smaller and lighter compared to a 7200 zoom. In terms of bokeh, obviously the 1.8 would be blurrier, but honestly, at this focal length here, even at f2.8, the blur is already looking fantastic. But the obvious disadvantage compared to a 1.8 is of course the low light performance. The 1.8 allows in more light, which is incredibly advantageous in low light situation. So if you want more distance along with that low light advantage, pick up the 135 1.8. As hinted earlier, the cons to these lenses is that they might feel too tight. Unfortunately, that would mean less flexibility if you're stuck too close to your subject. I would consider adding complementary lenses to them. My favorite has always been the 24 and the 85. I can get a wider perspective of the scene with a 24 and use the 85 to focus on something specific in that scene. However, I would avoid pairing a 50mm with an 85mm unless you know what you're doing. Otherwise, the type of shots that you could be getting might feel too similar. In the case of the 135, this would be a nice compliment if you have a mid-range zoom lens like a 24 to 70. Or if you forget a ultra-wide angle lens, you can take a panoramic shot with these telephoto lenses here to create a full ultra-wide angle look. So I would say the 85 millimeter is gonna be the safest bet. It's a lot more manageable, plus it's smaller, shorter, and likely more affordable and readily available at f1.8. If you're looking to invest in your first telephoto prime lens, I would say the 85 millimeter is it. Now the 135 on the other hand, this will be a great complement to the other lenses in your arsenal, perhaps something like a 24 to 70. The added reach of the 135 gift is gonna be insanely helpful, plus it has this unique look with the closer perspective compared to the 85. Hopefully you guys found this video helpful. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.